Okay. Hi, this is Tana. Tana Beverwick-Abuda. I'm going to be working with you guys at San Aldefonso Pueblo to do some health education. I love health education. Um, I've been a health educator for 30 years, over 30 years, um, working in every area from HIV AIDS to diabetes to asthma to pregnancy prevention, healthy pregnancies, healthy parenting, weight loss, fitness, everything under the sun that has to do with health behavior change. I do have a master's degree in cross-cultural health communications. And I was a Peace Corps volunteer in the East African country of Malawi working on HIV AIDS um, prevention and treatment from 1995 to 1998. So it's been a while now, I have a little bit more gray hair than I did then, but lots more experience. So um, I'm gonna be doing health education sessions with you all one time a week. Wednesday mornings are going to be half an hour from 8.15 to 9.15 here on Zoom. The reason we wanna have this on Zoom is that we would love to have these sessions be interactive. You'll get so much more out of it if you join us for the live program so that you can ask your questions, you can talk about your barriers, um, you can talk about your excuses. I'll tell you, we'll probably do a whole session on this at some point, but your excuses are the key to your success. So if I don't know your excuses, I can't help you overcome them. Um, so Wednesday morning, half an hour, and then Saturday mornings, um, not every Saturday morning, every other, you'll have to ask Troy for the schedule. Um, Saturday mornings from 9.30 to 10.30, we'll do a full hour in depth of the same topic that we covered on Wednesday. So we're hoping that schedule works. We definitely understand that not all of you can come in on the time that we're having the live program. Um, life is complicated. It's hard to schedule things in. So if you can, great. If you can't, watch the program on YouTube, comment underneath the video so we can still have some interaction and I'll interact with you throughout the week. Um, if you ever wanted to interact live with me, you can stop by the Española Fitness Studio on Riverside Drive in the old Pet Sense building. So if you ever went in there uh, to buy your animals some food, that's where we are, right next to the McDonald's that they just tore down, that old McDonald's. Okay, enough about me. What are we going to do today? We're going to talk about finding your why. I love to start with this when I do any kind of health behavior change workshop, class, or programming, because if you don't know your why, why you want to change a behavior, you really are never going to succeed changing it. So before we go too much farther, I want you to make a notebook. This is one of my teenagers math books. I have two teenage boys, a senior and a freshman. Um, I want you to get yourself a notebook for these health education sessions. Just like anything, the more work you put into it, the more you're gonna get out of it. So a notebook and a pen, pencil, something um, to write down. We're gonna have lots of activities for you to do um, probably some homework to do. Uh, nobody's gonna be checking and grading because you're an adult, but you should consider doing them if you really want to significantly change your health behavior. So you've got your notebook, you've got your pen. Now, I'm gonna start by sharing my screen with you. I have a little PowerPoint and then we're gonna come off the PowerPoint back live um, so that we can interact and talk, okay? So give me just a sec while I share my screen. I've gotten pretty good at technology, but you know, there's always uh, something new. And where is it? Where's the screen share? Oh, there it is, easy. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen. So I'm gonna disappear for a moment. 
And you sh should now be able to hear my voice, but not be able to see my face. You should be able to see my presentation that started at the wrong spot. So give me just a moment here. There we go. Woo. I bet you guys have gotten good on technology also during the pandemic. I think we've all gotten better at it. Oh, it's going to start at the wrong spot again. Jeez. I don't know why it's going back to that spot. Okay. Still with me? Hey, why does it keep going back to that slide? There we go. All right, here we are. Finding your why. Your why is the key to your motivation. Like I said at the beginning, if you don't know your why, you're not going to get very far. People seem to think that motivation is a magical tool that we find somewhere and we put it in our toolbox and we take it out when we need it and and that's how it works but it doesn't you can't rely on your motivation if you have not figured out what your why is so today and then next week saturday we'll be working on this oftentimes we we want to do healthy things. We want to have healthy behaviors because we've been told that we should, but we don't really understand why. We've been told that we need to be lighter, that we need to be thinner, that we need to be anything er. We need to be prettier. We need to be smarter. We need to be um anything improved but we we don't have a reason why if we don't know why we're not going to be truly motivated a good example of this for me is that advertising for fitness so i'm also a fitness instructor you'll be seeing me do some some fitness classes um also with you during this program but um as a fitness instructor I hear the fitness industry talking about, let's get thin for that bathing suit season on the beach, right? I was born and raised in New Mexico. I've lived in places around the world that have beaches, but frankly, I don't like the beach and I'm not too crazy about being in a swimsuit. So that idea of being motivated to be in a swimsuit on a beach does not work for me because it's not my why, right? It might be that somebody tries to motivate another person by saying, you wanna be alive for your grandchildren, but maybe you're somebody who didn't have children, so you don't have grandchildren. So that's not gonna motivate you. Your why is very personal to what's important to you, how you want to live your life, and what matters. And it's different from every individual. Even with people in your own family, this may be really different and probably will be different. So we need to discover our why so we're knowing why we're doing healthy things, not because somebody told me I should. What does it mean to you? I'm gonna take you through some exercises today to help you figure that out. When we talk about health behavior change, doing healthy things to make us healthier, what does health look like to you? For one person, it might be being able to see muscles in your arms. For another person, it might be being able to run a 5k race. For another person, it might be just being able to take a walk in the backyard. For somebody else, it might be to not have another heart attack. It's super personal. So I want you to take a moment now, I'm going to be quiet, get your notebook, and I want you to write down what health looks like to you.
Okay, that's all the time I'm going to give you. I'm not very good at being quiet. Um, and I don't want to bore you with silence. Okay. Next, I want you to write down what ways will health improve the quality of your life? How will being healthy make your life better, right? How will being able to see the muscles in your arms make your life better? Maybe you're trying to lift something heavy. <laughs> that's going to be the, the piece that's going to make your life better. If, if you can lift the plant, if you can lift the bag of cement, that's what the strong muscles in your arms are going to affect your life, right? If you're planning on being a supermodel, you may care about how they look, or you may care just about being attractive to other people. That's important for some people. Okay, so you write down what ways will health improve the quality of your life. What's important to realize is that getting healthy is often displeasurable, uncomfortable, and hard work. It just is. There's no pill you can take, no matter how many advertisements you see on TV. It's work. You might have to change how you've eaten your entire life. You might have to fit in a walk every day into a really busy schedule. You might have to argue with your family about how to spend free time. You might have to suffer through a really hard and uncomfortable exercise regime. It's hard, it's uncomfortable, and it's work. Now, we're gonna have whole sessions on how awesome it is, right? And how good it can make you feel. But for today's session, I wanna focus on the fact that it's often displeasurable, uncomfortable, and work. Because in order to do hard things, you have to have perspective and long-term goals that are worth the effort. Motivation is created by an imbalance where your discomfort is higher than the effort it takes to do something. That's why we move. Think about putting your hand in a fire. The pain that the fire is causing your skin is very motivating to pull your hand out of the fire, right? So in order to do something hard, we have to have a really good goal to balance out the difficulty of doing the work. Your goals have to be worth the effort. And this is where we come back to your why. If you have a why to live for, you can tolerate the how. If you have a strong why to change how you're eating, you can tolerate the getting used to tofu, right? I love tofu. We'll talk about that later. If you have the why, you can tolerate the burn of a hard workout. If you have the why, you can tolerate the difficulty getting your family to come on board with the health changes that you're trying to make. So you have to have the why to tolerate the how. So how the heck do we find our why? Number one, we're going to ask why five times. Those of you who have toddlers in the house or used to have toddlers in the house, you remember the constant why. And you answer their questions and they ask why again and you answer the question and they ask why again. That's what I'm gonna ask you to do. And don't ask me why I'm asking you to do it. I'm gonna explain. I can hear you sassy ones there, putting my own words back at me. Um, so, okay. What I want you to do in your notebook is I want you to write down one health behavior change that you want to implement. Now, we're gonna talk about goal setting a little later. We're not gonna go into it too much today because we don't have too much time. We'll probably spend more time 
on this in the hour long session, but it needs to be something specific. I don't just want you to write down, get healthy. I don't just want you to write down, have more energy, right? I want you to write down something specific like, um, I want to lose weight. I want to um, lower my blood sugar levels. I want to exercise more, okay? So I'll take a moment here, I'll be quiet. Write down one health behavior change you'd like to implement today. Okay, got it? Now, I'm going to ask you why. And I want you to write the word why in the line under where you just wrote down the behavior that you want to implement. And I want you to answer that question, why? Why do you want to lower your blood sugar? Why do you want to exercise more? Why do you want to lose weight? Again, I'm asking you just to focus on one health behavior change right now and then answer why. Once you've done that, I'm gonna be the toddler and I'm gonna ask you why for the answer for your first why. So for example, if I had written down, I want to lose weight, that's my health behavior change I wanna to implement today. And my answer to the first why is I want to lose weight to be healthier. Then a toddler asked me that second why, why do you wanna be healthier? And I answer, I want to be healthier because I want to live longer. Then on your notebook, you're going to write down another why. You're going to answer that why. Why do you want to live longer? I want to live longer so I can be around for my family longer. And you guessed it. Ask another why. Why do you want to be around for your family longer? Answer, because I love them. Why? Why do you love them? You love them because they bring you joy. And I think that was five. That's just an example. I want you to do that for your health behavior change. So in your notebook, you should have the statement of your health behavior change and then five whys and answer combinations underneath that statement. When we do this in the hour long session, I'll do it together with you. All right, if you have questions on that, join us Saturday the, what date would that be? Maybe the 22nd um, and we'll go through it together. So be the toddler, ask why five times. What happens at the end of that exercise? You then take the answer to your last why, and that's the reason why you wanna change that health behavior change. So I want you to circle your last why and draw an arrow from that up to the statement of your health behavior change. And it ends up being, for my example, it ends up being, I want to lose weight, because it will bring me joy related to my family and being alive. Okay, you can kind of see how that works. Okay, the next exercise in finding your why, I want you to think about what gets you out of bed in the morning and what keeps you up at night. What revs you? What makes you excited about being alive? And when I, when I say what keeps you up at night, I'm not talking about stress. I'm talking about happy things, things that, it, that you can't wait to get up for, okay? What gets you out of bed in the morning? I want you to write that down in your notebook. If you want, you can write the question also, just so you remember what it was when you're looking back at this in a few months. 
What gets you out of bed in the morning? On a good day, huh? What are you excited about? Go ahead and write it down. Okay, next. You're gonna write a sentence that you hope will come to define your life. So this can be challenging to do for some people. If you think about famous people that we know about, you can usually summarize their life in one sentence. What defined them? Um, Abraham Lincoln uh, ended the Civil War. That might be a sentence, you know, for Abraham Lincoln. Um, for your grandmother, it might be grandma cooked an amazing biscuit. It might be he was a really good father. It might be um, she started a business. So think about a sentence that defines your life. It could be, he was really fun, something like that. So I want you to take a moment. This might be an activity that you need to think about more. So don't feel pressured to write the be all end all sentence at this point, but I just want you to be thinking of it. What sentence will come to define your life? Another way to think about that same sentence is what will people say at your 80th birthday? So you're there, you're 80. What are people going to say about you at your birthday? So people are giving speeches and their toasts. It's this awesome person's 80th birthday. What are those people saying? Are they saying that she was a great gardener? Are they telling stories about how they remember stopping in his store and picking up the chicken food? What, what are they gonna be saying? What do you want people to say? Don't focus on the bad stuff people might say, right? We're talking positive things right now. So write that down. Then the last, no, the second to last question, who do you want to be? That's something that we ask children all the time, right? When was the last time you asked yourself that? Who do you want to be? Don't ask yourself if you are that person now. Just say, who do you want to be? Ideally, who do you want to be today? What do you want to leave in the world? What do you want to be remembered at? What are they going to say at your 80th birthday? And the last question is, how will you measure your life? So um, if parenting is a why for you, a big, important why for you, maybe you're going to measure your life by the success, however you measure that, of your children. If um, financial success is really important to you. Maybe you're going to look back and measure your life on how financially stable you were. If being happy, having feelings of happiness is a why for you, you may measure your life by how happy you feel. And that's different for everybody. And there's no judgment for any of those. It's very personal. So how will you measure your life? Write that down in your notebook. I know today you're probably writing on a scrap piece of paper, but I would suggest, unless you're going to put that scrap piece of paper into a, a file folder, get yourself a notebook for our next session so you can keep everything together. It'll become your health behavior change journal. Okay, we're moving on. Why is it so important to find your why? Cognitive dissonance is the key. 
Maybe you've heard of this. Maybe you're an expert in it. If you are, please share in the comments. This is a really fascinating topic. Cognitive dissonance is the key to behavior change. And cognitive dissonance is mental discomfort. So we talked about it a little earlier today about how motivation is created through discomfort. Putting your hand in the fire is discomfort, it hurts. And we're very motivated to stop things from hurting. Mental discomfort is something that we all intuitively understand, even if we don't have the words to describe it. Mental discomfort are things that make you go, oh, it just doesn't feel right. And when it doesn't feel right, we're motivated to change. We're gonna have whole sessions on social accountability. We'll probably talk about this more in the hour long session on finding your why and cognitive dissonance. But the more other people know that you're, that what you're doing is gonna cause you mental discomfort, the more mental discomfort it will cause you. So um, keep that in mind for other sessions. But you know inside that feeling that makes you go, ew. Cognitive dissonance is the mental discomfort that results from holding conflicting beliefs, values, attitudes, and actions. If you believe something, but you're acting in a different way, you will feel mental discomfort. If you value something, but you're acting in a way contrary to that value, you will feel mental discomfort. That's what cognitive dissonance is. We seek consistency in what we do. We seek comfort. We seek comfort in what we know. We seek comfort in what we believe. So having conflict in our beliefs values, attitudes, and actions causes feelings of unease and discomfort. It makes us feel yucky. And that's good for health behavior change because it's very motivating once we realize it. Inconsistency between what we believe and how we behave motivates us to engage in actions that will help to minimize the feelings of discomfort. So if I have declared that I want to lose weight and then I'm eating the Cheetos out of the bag in bed, I'm gonna feel uncomfortable. I'm gonna feel cognitive dissonance because it's inconsistent. If I planned to take a walk today, but I decide to watch Netflix on the couch instead, psychologically, I'm gonna feel discomfort. And I need to realize that in order to be motivated the next time to take my walk. When we're clear about our why, Acting in ways that contradict it feels awful. It doesn't feel good. But we have to be clear about our beliefs, our values, our attitudes in order to feel that contradiction, which is why we have to be clear about our why. If I say that I want to lose weight in order to be around longer for my family because they bring me joy, if I then am eating the Cheetos out of the bag in bed, I'm going to feel uncomfortable because I'm choosing those Cheetos over my family, right? Remember that arrow that we drew from the last why back to the reason? That's, that's what we're doing. We're choosing the Cheetos over our family. This awful feeling known as cognitive dissonance is where true long-term motivation comes from. 
Now I'm going to go back and stop sharing the screen and come back to our live Zoom so I can see if you guys are awake. Are you awake? I can't see you today because we're not actually live. But um, I hope you understand a little bit more about why finding your why is crucial to behavior change how to find your why using those six questions and activities that you wrote down in your notebook. And you understand how knowing your why and being aware of inconsistencies in your behavior and actions creates feelings of mental discomfort, cognitive dissonance that motivates us. It's the key to motivation. You get that down, we can do anything. All right, that's it for today. Comment with questions, with barriers, with issues. Um, you could even call me, 505-927-8516, um, to talk about your personal issues. And um, we will talk lots more about this, not this Saturday, but next Saturday when we do a full hour long session on Zoom. Join me on Zoom 930 on that Saturday and we'll post the schedule. Thanks. You guys have a good one. Bye.